the name of uh, whoever wrote. I do not know the name of whoever wrote on the magazine The Irrocuptible, but she has been enjoying, or he has been enjoying, quite a fame in France, and repeatedly, repeatedly, since uh, the novels came out, France has been one of the first country to adore you. Yay. And still to this date, there is a woman, I forgot her name, who just wrote a book about authors like Laura, many authors who have in the years and centuries have been changing their name, their personality, and dual personality, and why in the world, in the United States, it is seen as uh, evil. Because in France, we have been living through all this history of wonderful human beings who have written novels under different names, males, females. It doesn't matter what gender, but why in the USA we have to have lawyers to take care of it all. So anyway, I mean, I don't know what my point is, but in uh, July, just to let you know, in France, in one of the best rock magazines, she made uh, not front cover, but major middle cover. <laughs> loved all of it and then when the reveal came that seemed wonderful to me too although clearly people were suffering but but um, there was something so rich about what happened to the to the whole story it kind of made it deeper for me and I, I guess the thing for me that's so compelling about it like when, when when that happened people were saying all sorts of there were so many vicious attacks and people expressing this incredible outrage that seemed kind of hypocritical considering how many people were kind of opportunistically using JT for their purposes, you know. But what seemed really moving to me was that there's this book, Sarah, about, you know, this boy with the missing mother. And the boy is the celebrity, you know, the author of the book is the celebrity author who's a boy. And but meanwhile, there's like, the book is named after the missing mother. Mm -hmm. And then when, when the whole thing came out, you realize that wasn't written by the boy, that was written by the missing mother. And mm -hmm. so I just wonder whether this is all whether there was any consciousness of that or if this is just kind of part of the welter of working things out. So if that comes up as a question, I don't know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, I, I do think so much of the, the art. Um, you know, when I was talking to Jasmine about creating this, she was just there, she went through my files, and it was just like, I mean, she, she made those files, because <laughs> I just, used to have piles and piles of stuff like press would come in and it would just be like okay whatever and she went through it and she took out all this stuff and she just sat with the material and it's knowing that the spirit will move through you and it's um art is uh being in contact with that spirit having communion with spirit right and having all those materials and she knew from there's always fear, right, when you, when you have to produce a work of art, and it's allowing spirit to move through you and have faith, especially if you've done it before. I, I think that's why it's so important for older artists to work with younger artists, because it's you can um, allow, give permission and explain what the process is. I think so often there's this idea that um, there's that separation where um, older artists aren't valued and it's all about youth, but there's so much that having a mentor, uh, and part of that is learning that you can be available to the spirit, and when having all those materials, like I saw with her, she had that experience that in the past, she will know what to do. It's like, um, you, you know, the, there's this beetle where you give it a bunch of jewelry and it just starts weaving. Uh, I think it actually eats it and shits it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a great shit! <laughs> you know that that you know th that um, it's it's being able to go into the unconscious and um, so much of the stuff that was done. If you look at it, you can say, "Oh, it's this and that," and um, uh, 
there's so much of it that I'd like to say that I could take credit for, but it, it was so much of what I gave myself over to. I was really able to completely be host, to be a host. And I think art can be seen as so threatening. Like seeing that movie War, Women, Art, Revolution, and how these women were making art, and just how threatening that is. So that for the mainstream culture can feel like murder. Yeah, it's funny because in 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 so much of my work they would just they'd call it pornographic. Like one thing that came up in the trial is um, the director was saying all the ass fucking in the book, Sarah, and there is no sex. There is no sex in Sarah. There there's referred to as diddling, right? But there's no sex. But he was, he sat there being d deposed and said all the ass fucking. And I just remember thinking, wow, you, you are lying to create me as this. That's exactly why I didn't want to give you my life rights, which he was demanding. Because just like he did with Dion Arbus, turning her into someone who wanted to be ass fucked, right? Mm, I didn't see that. Yeah. For yeah, oh, I she wanted in, in the movie, and it's like here he's talking, he's turned me now into someone who's a pornographer who's making a child be ass-fucked, which the jury didn't read my books, but it's a good way to criminalize a woman by saying she's a pornographer, that she produces pornography when, mm -hmm. I'm, when, when you're exploring issues of sexuality and issues of, of um, I mean, Sarah more deals with abuse and invasion of boundaries, not gratuitous. I don't think there, there's any gratuitous sex in there at all. None. I guess what I experienced is it, it hit a nerve. And some people who had whatever their life experience was, it either brought up pain or it maybe excited them. Mm -hmm and or a combination well anxiety and nervousness feel the same anxiety nervousness excitement happiness you know like when you cry because you're happy they feel similar physically yeah. in your body well i think it's good sometimes just to because i think as an artist we work best intuitively i i really think the best way i've been able to describe the gesture that was jt the the books, all of it, was really like being on a surfboard and riding a wave and just doing subtle adjustments to stay on top. And that was feeling what was going on in the culture, what was going on within me, the pain, the joy, all of it, and doing subtle. And you can have the neuroscientists explain what it was. That in this place, in this time, Right here, right now, I was able to combine everything perfectly to stay on top of that wave. The, what it was in the conversation with other artists, what it was spiritually, what it was. And I don't, I mean, Duchamp talked about it, that it's not for the artist to explain. It's, I mean, we're still having conversations about what other artists have done hundreds of years ago. People find new ways to look at gestures artists made. Yeah, and you create questions that stimulate, you know, discussion, and that's the point. The idea is just can you stay, after you get off the fucking surfboard, do you get, how do you, you get off the fucking surfboard, some people are able to have a smooth landing in, some people they tumble off, and the wave clobbers them, and it's, do you get hit on the head with a surfboard? Do you make it back to shore? I like that a lot. That's so boring. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, subtle adjustments to stay on the. Yeah. yeah, and it's not, you're not thinking, I'm motivated by money, the prize money. You're not even thinking this is a contest. You're not even thinking, you're just think. you're not even thinking, if I fall off, I'm going to get clobbered. You're not, you can't even imagine getting off the surfboard. You just know that it, it is that absolutely being alive moment.
You just have to stay on that surfboard. You have to do the adjustments to keep on the wave. There is no before, there is no after. There's just that absolute moment.